DNA is the blueprint that defines every living system on the planet, not just human beings. So it's, it's fundamental to life. And now we have a method for reading and interpreting this information at scale. Over 20 years ago, uh, David and I were doing basic uh, blue skies research and the discovery that we made led on to a method for reading the code of DNA, sequencing the DNA in a way that could be done much faster and cheaper than could be done before. This was a project to have DNA attached to a surface and watch in real time an enzyme called DNA polymerase adding uh, bases into the DNA. And the problem was that um, we kept on missing the process and had to do the experiment again. And I was thinking about if we could do this in this very paralyzed way using a camera, we might be able to, we, we can't miss and we could, always we could always capture the process. And when we were thinking about this, at this and in the background, the whole human genome project was taking off, which is the, determining the sequence of the average human, not an individual human. We used to have um, informal discussions with our co-workers, sometimes down the pub. And uh, one August evening in the Panton Arms, we, um, we, we suddenly saw the pieces of the jigsaw come together that led us to see a way of, of sequencing DNA that could be scalable, massively scalable. I wrote down on a piece of A4 a very simple calculation. If we image these, th these color-coded bases, how fast we could possibly sequence DNA and left that in Shanker's pigeonhole. And for me, that, that, that was, I suddenly realized that our technology could sequence DNA um, about a thousand-fold faster than the current technology. Now, that, that was at a time when um, standard technology could read of the order of 100,000 basis per experiment. So we realised it had potential but we hadn't actually done anything so we were sort of pre-proof of concept. So we got advice from Alan Munro who was the master of Christ at the time and put us in, in touch with a venture capital company called um, Abingworth. So we went through about nine months of due diligence. This, this was potentially so revolutionary but potentially so risky what, what to do and eventually they decided to fund us at a very modest level, funding two postdocs in the chemistry department and we built up from there. So the, the, the company we founded, uh, we called it Selexa, generated its first system in 2006 called the 1G Genome Analyzer. It was called that because 1G is a giga base, a billion base sequencer. So Illumina, uh, which is an American company, uh, became interested in, in collaborating with Selexa and they, they acquired the company and the technology. And um, what they did was take that technology and improve it further by another thousand to ten thousand fold which is remarkable. So I think the reason our technology is used so widely over the world is we built one of the first companies to commercialize it and the way it works very much um, mimics how nature copies DNA um, and it's highly um, accurate because um, we differ in one base in a thousand between each individual. Life sciences researchers have actually invented applications of the technology uh, that certainly I, I never dreamt of um, back in the 90s. So that, that's what happens when you put technology into the hands of smart, creative research people. So I think for me, the, the, this is it. The, this has really made a difference it was when I saw this um, BBC News article where they'd employed um, um, our technology to sequence a newborn baby and their parents. And this newborn baby unfortunately had some rare disease. By comparing the sequence of the, the, the baby to the parents, they could work out which um, DNA base had, was altered. Unfortunately, in this case, um, they could work out a treatment 
for this particular pathway that was failing and so that the baby could go home with its, their parents. And the parents were delighted, obviously. And I just realised, wow, you know, it's, it's not just a technology for scientists, it's actually a technology that can make a difference. We're now in a position to start integrating this technology and the information that it generates into national healthcare systems. And certainly um, in places like the UK, where we have Genomics England, which is part of the government-funded wing of the NHS, the, the idea is to bring genomic technology and data to the National Health Service. The vision is the idea of preventative medicine, where you have your sequence determined, you would know what diseases you're predisposed to, and you'll be monitored for those diseases and treated before the diseases become very severe. So that, that would be the, the vision. I think what surprised me is how we literally went from a piece of paper to something that's used all over the world in, in just under 10 years. Um, and that just, I wouldn't have expected things to move that fast and have so much impact in such a short length of time. And I think that that's a, a large contributor is all the excellent team of people who have been involved in the project since its beginning. The UK has really led the world, um, I think, over a long history uh, in the development of genomics and its, its application. And I think, again, linking to the work that David and I did, it all began with um, a taxpayer-funded research grant here in the UK. And without that um, funding, none of this would have happened.